Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Caitlin and I upload a whole bunch of different types of videos on this channel, mainly surrounding true crime psychological cases as well as a little bit of fashion and lifestyle sprinkled in where I can. And today I'm back with episode number two of my Psychology Saturday series where every other Saturday I upload some form of psychology related video and for this one today it's going to be a little less specific. So typically I would talk about like a particular experiment or a particular topic within psychology, whereas for this video today I'm actually just going to be discussing things relating to psychology at uni, things you should know, things you should consider before studying at a university based on my experiences since I know it is back to uni season hence why I've chosen to do this topic on this week um, because I know everyone's kind of starting uni now whether you're going into studying psychology, whether you're already studying it, whether you're hoping to study it at some point in your life or not at all but you were just interested because it does I suppose give any of you that aren't really involved in psychology in the academic sense it gives you a little bit of an insight into what it's like to study it and um, go through the motions of what you cover when you are studying it at a degree level. So just a very quick disclaimer that I feel like I should just run through very quickly. Um, I can only basically talk about things based on my experience. I cannot say for sure that every one of these points is going to be exact for everyone and every uni course because everything's different. So I found that these ones that I kind of narrowed it down to are um, kind of likely to occur based on my knowledge of a few unis and a few like people that I've spoken to and things like that but I apologize and don't take everything that I'm saying as like law because things might be different especially it will make more sense when I go into the video but especially if you're doing like a specialized course or if you are doing like a master's because obviously a master's you typically focus on one area of research within psychology and also if you've never been to my channel before or if you're relatively new here and you don't know much about me I have just graduated with my Bachelor of Science degree in psychology I studied for three years at Keele University and I graduated in July of this year which is absolutely crazy because your gal's a psychology graduate so yes hopefully that covers everything that I was hoping to disclaim before I get started and with all that being said we shall just go ahead get started discussing my tips and things that I think you should know before studying psych at university. The first one that I feel the need to say because I feel like in my knowledge I have kind of come across people who have been surprised by this and they weren't necessarily aware of this factor but unless you are doing a specialised or an applied course and you're on like a general psychology course you will probably be spending the majority of your time studying what's considered as the core fields. So by this I'm referring to each of the topics that you likely got an introduction to during your period studying it if you did at A level, i.e. social psychology, developmental and cognitive psychology. And these are all large fields so some of you might be thinking like why does she feel the need to tell us this? We know they are huge fields within psychology so obviously we're going to learn about these. I do know of some people and I've also had some questions with people saying like oh, I'm interested in this specific field um, and I want to study this, should I do a general psychology course or should I look for something a little bit more applied? So I, I know there are people out there that go into a psychology degree thinking that they're going to have more focus on like the sexy, the glamorous, not literally sexy and glamorous, but the applied um, specialised fields like forensic psychology or advertising psychology or specific areas like that. And in all likelihood, you probably will get the opportunity to maybe pick like an elective module in one of these sort of more applied fields, or there might be just the odd core module that's a little bit more applied throughout your course of study. However, the majority of the focus will be on these big main core fields within psychology. And I think the main reason this occurs is simply because psychology is such a large field that there are just too many areas within it to be able to fit them all into a psychology, a general psychology degree in any detail. You'd literally have like a lecture very briefly covering what that field of psychology does. You wouldn't be able to go into it in any depth and there are just so many students with different areas of focus or what they find interesting that they can't really cover all of them. So I think just please be aware of that if you're not already aware of that, that if you're doing a psychology course you might not even get a chance to go into a specific module of what you find interesting. So for example, I know that I personally always went into things, as I'm sure you can tell, with an interest in forensic psychology, but I also have a bit of an interest in sports psychology and neuroscience. And we had, I believe, in like my first year, uh, a module that was called Applied Psychology, where every lecture we got to have an insight into those fields. So there was one lecture on advertising psychology and there was one lecture on sport and exercise psychology. But aside from that, we didn't really get a lot of options to cover those 
areas more in depth. In one of my years I did take a couple of criminology electives where I had some free elective options and I could pick from a criminology course but with forensic psychology specifically and I, I know that this is probably quite important because a lot of you here likely will have an interest in like criminology and forensic psychology. If you know that you want to go down only a criminal psychology route maybe consider the possibility of doing a criminology course as opposed to just a psychology course or doing like a dual if you can because um, you might find yourself really not enjoying the general psychology course since there is so much that is covered that isn't criminal. But on a more positive note, this does mean that everything that you do cover, you go to in extreme depths. So you get to cover, you know, like social psychology, um, developmental and cognitive in a lot of depth. And there's a lot of information within these fields that can then be applied to other fields that you might end up in in psychology. So with psychology, as much as there are so many different areas of focus, a lot of it can overlap and you can apply your knowledge from one field to another. So it's all interesting when you look at it that way, when you look at what can I apply to this situation based on what I've previously learned. I don't want you to find this too disheartening if you are interested in a specific field of psychology because I do think doing a general psychology course is very beneficial if you want to expand your knowledge on the field as a whole. I know that I went into my degree really, really disliking a couple of the core fields, so I was not a fan of developmental and social at all. Um, I did them and they were a huge part of my degree because they are considered like the necessities of having a psychology degree. Um, and I just know that from A level, they weren't my biggest interest whatsoever. I just couldn't see myself going into them in a later point after university, after my studies. However, I did find other areas that I hadn't necessarily done before, or even areas within those larger umbrellas of developmental and social that I found a little bit more interesting that I didn't think initially I would enjoy. So the next biggest point that I feel like I should make about psychology at university is that you will do a lot of statistics. And this was not something that I prepared myself for as much as I should have. I knew that there was going to be some statistics because a psychology degree, I think especially if you're doing a Bachelor of Science as opposed to a Bachelor of Arts, you will spend a lot of your time carrying out actual experiments and then because you've carried out the experiments and collected the results, you will then be required to learn all of these statistical analyses that you could possibly do um, and carry out on your set of data that you've collected, which is a lot, especially for someone like me who's never done statistics before. It was a lot of information and I'm not naturally gifted at statistics, but it was definitely a challenge and it did kind of break up a little bit of the um, other modules that were so heavily like essay based and theory focused. It was just a little bit of a change. So prepare yourself. You can do it. I'm really not, like I said, naturally gifted at all in the statistics field and I still managed to do it. So don't let that dishearten you whatsoever, but just be aware that it will come. And you know what, if it really is something that you think you will worry about, that you will really struggle with, maybe even early on start maybe revising or looking into possible statistical analyses, some of the equations, some of the language, just to give yourself a little bit of an introduction into it, ease you into it a little bit. I wouldn't go too in depth because there are so many statistical analyses and tests and things like that out there that you can't learn them all because your university won't cover them all. So don't go too in depth, but maybe just if it's something you're worried about, Give yourself a little bit of time before you actually go full on into the course to research it a little bit. So tip number three, I definitely picked up on this a little bit too late, which probably sounds really silly. And me saying it to you now, it probably sounds quite obvious. But if you've never been in the situation, kind of can't understand what it's like when you're in there. So in university, uh, I don't know again if everyone's the same, but for mine, we got a lot of reading set to us, but we had some that were marked as and like necessities that like you have to read these these are required core readings for every lecture or every module or whatever so you had to do those and then they also listed a set of optional readings now what i would recommend is either if there is a module or a topic that you do not get as easily so you might understand but it might not come as naturally to you do those optional readings for your own benefit whether there is an essay set on them or not do those readings just because it will help you so much more in the long run and keep a hold of that entire list of readings. I know I had to go back at the end of every year and look through every PowerPoint of every lecture and collect all the readings. So maybe make a like a list of all of them. Don't mark them as core and optional, just put them all in there and work your way through them gradually, almost like leisure reading. I know that sounds weird because it's not like a fiction book or anything, but do it as fun because that way you are reinforcing in your spare time, your knowledge, 
so that it becomes a little bit more natural to you to, to think about that sort of thing and to work out those sort of theories and that topic it's just really something I'd recommend and it's only something that I can really say in retrospect when I look back at years that I didn't do things like this it's just definitely a recommendation of mine and it also means that whenever you have an essay you don't have to go back and do all of the readings at one go in preparation for this one essay because then that's short-term learning it probably won't stick in your brain um, and it just is really time consuming having to go through an entire list of readings before an essay is due and linking on to that I guess this is a separate tip so our class is tip number four um, when you're doing an essay make sure you do way more reading like we spend way more time reading than you do writing the essay because readings in psychology are so important and I think the main thing that you need to try and introduce to yourself is having your own opinions something I struggled with I was so used to learning facts and what's right and what's wrong or what is found and what isn't found and what is supported and what isn't supported in studies but when you get to degree level you have to start writing about not necessarily your opinion but you have to start developing like a sense of free thought about these topics or about two different papers that maybe prove two different things that are like in contrast with each other so spend a lot of time reading and developing like an argument that you formed yourself so not for the sake of supporting something you found previously in another piece of research if that makes sense i hope that all makes sense and also linking on to that about essay writing and references i really really recommend finding your like sweet spot of the amount of references so the amount of um piece of reading and articles and things like that that you reference in a in an essay or in a in a paper because i found that some lecturers gave you like a recommended number of how many that you should read through and include in your essay whereas some just didn't and they left it to yourself and i found that some people just would take one extreme or the other so some wouldn't really barely have any references they'd only use a couple of papers to talk about whereas others would spend so long adding in loads of pieces of research and talking about them in their essay that they never went into any depth in any of them so you need to find a sweet spot maybe even ask a tutor or something if there's like a, a recommended amount for a certain length of essay um, don't over reference and don't under reference <laughs> Tip number five, I found it was really handy if you had time or if you had a little bit of like free time, spare time, brush up on your A-level studies, not all of them. I didn't have my A-level notes with me when I moved to uni. I kept them at home, but at home, home, not at uni. Just brush up on the core studies that were big in A-level. So things like Zimbardo's prison experiment, um, Ash's conformity study, basically all the ones that I've covered on my channel, if that helps. Because you might not cover them. A lot of the time I found that in my uni they they either assumed everyone already knew topics like that or knew studies like that off by heart because they'd been drilled into us at A-level or they went through them like we'd never looked at them before and both could be quite frustrating at times depending on what you were discussing. And then also sometimes those core topics would be extremely relevant to the essay title you'd be writing or the topic you're talking about but they wouldn't be included in like the recommended uh, studies that are included in a lecture. So if you have prior knowledge of them, if you've brushed up on your knowledge on these basic core studies, you can then bring them in as an additional study and boost up your little your little marks there because you've got an external reference so brush up on them um, just because it's something that you're always going to need to refer back to they are core studies for a reason and a lot of the time I find that they are kind of just ingrained in my memory anyway from A level so it might not be that difficult it's not like extra studying. Tip number six this is more for when you're actually in lectures and things uh, going back to the idea of like the core fields within psychology I found in points in particular in like social psychology because there's just so many long uh, discussions relating to certain topics because there's a lot in the field. I found myself just looking at this going this is not me, I do not click with this and I just cannot be bothered with it but in reality you need to kind of turn around if you find yourself doing that and just tell yourself that it might be long and it might be boring to you but it's probably one of the most influential or important pieces of research or, or topic or theory that you can come across in the field and again it can be applied at a later point but it's most likely something that's either going to help you in the future with other modules and other essays if you remember it or if you take it in or it will just help your genuine understanding when you're taking on psychology in the real world past your studies something that you can apply in real life so please even if you find them really boring actually at least try and take them in because i guarantee they are in those lectures for a reason and you will probably need them for a lot of your life if you continue on in a field of psychology in a career. Tip number seven, I would say start thinking from an early point which of the modules and which of the fields and topics in psychology are the ones that not only interest you but you could see yourself 
perhaps maybe researching more and going into a career because then you can look into them further and from an early point get an understanding of what will be required of you past getting your degree because some of them might need flat out uh, volunteering experience and you might not have that so if you notice that early on you can start getting that in your spare time in your summers in between uni rather than getting to the end of uni like I did and not really sure completely what field I wanted to go into and I didn't have anything because I didn't prep myself on anything so I, I couldn't go into anything straight away but then my last tip completely contradicts that and I just want to let you guys know don't stress if you don't find something that you can see yourself doing as a career later in life you don't have to decide then and there you have plenty of other options so as much as you might find certain fields interesting I know I did there were ones I were like oh I was having fun in this you know I enjoyed this I learned that quite easily but I couldn't see myself doing it for my entire life and that's okay you don't have to decide then and there what it is you want to do for the rest of your life you can go into multiple fields you can start getting experience in one and then go and do a master's in another area and then go get a job in another just use what you've had previously your master's and your experience as a little bit of background experience it's completely flexible and that is the biggest benefit i think the biggest plus side of psychology being so broad and having so many areas it might seem daunting that you have to pick one to go into but in reality you never really in my opinion have to pick straight away to just do one field and I think that is a bonus to someone like me who enjoys multiple things and doesn't know what area she wants to go into. So that is everything I've waffled on quite a bit this definitely was not a scripted video as I'm sure you guys can tell I reckon there'll be a lot of jump cuts of me like mumbling or rambling or something I hope you found this interesting. Let me know your thoughts down below. Let me know down below if you are going into uni, if you've started uni, if you're doing psychology, and if you're not, what other course you're doing and how you're finding it. Let me know everything. I know the Kiel Psychology Freshers Week is this coming week. So if you've had your Freshers Week, um, let me know how it went. I love hearing about people's Freshers Week stories because it takes me back to three years ago when I started. So yes, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this interesting and I'll see you guys very soon for another video. Thanks for watching. Bye.